People like Singer or Reagan or even myself try to give an argument for ethical vegetarianism. What are we trying to do? Are we just coming here trying to impose our values on you? Right? I don't think so. That's not what I'm trying to do. I don't, even if that's what I wanted to do, I don't think I could. Right? What they're trying to do is to impose your own values on you. They're trying to show you that your beliefs and values already commit you to the immorality of eating meat. You just haven't seen the connection. So just, I'm going to suggest that these are some things that almost everybody in the room believes. And if you accept these principles, then I'm going to suggest that they commit you to certain things you might not have noticed. So here's one. Other things being equal, a world with less pain and suffering is better than a world with more pain and suffering. I've never presented a version of this talk where someone said, you know, we just don't have enough suffering. We need a little more. Things would be so much better with some more suffering. But, but I think this is just a fairly straightforward, non-contentious claim. Um, second, it's generally agreed, everybody thought burning the dog alive was wrong, that unnecessary cruelty is wrong and shouldn't be supported or encouraged. Oh yeah, burn more dogs. No, you know, people would try to lock you up if this was your perspective. Now, most of us also have some flattering views about ourselves, like I'm the sort of person who would certainly take steps to reduce the amount of pain and suffering in the world if I could do so with very little effort. I mean, I wouldn't really have to strain myself. And I strive to be a moral individual in my day-to-day -day life. I try to live my life in accordance with my values. It's important to me. Most of us also think, and this is related to B, that it's morally wrong to treat animals inhumanely for no good reason. And if push comes to shove, most of us think that it's worse to kill a conscious, sentient animal than it is to kill a plant. Killing a dog raises more moral issues than pulling a weed, for example. Now with just those simple, I think, relatively uncontroversial ideas and no big elaborate theory, you're not going to get a big elaborate theory from me, don't have one. I want to try to limit the false things I say. You get the following consistency argument. Virtually all commercial animal agriculture, especially factory farming, causes animals intense pain and suffering for no good reason, and thus increases the amount of unnecessary pain and suffering in the world. So, if you think that a world with less unnecessary suffering is better than a world with more unnecessary suffering, which is what roughly A and B were telling us, those beliefs commit you to the view that the world would be better with fewer factory farms and less animal agriculture generally. Step two, by purchasing meat, one is financially supporting, monetarily supporting factory farming and is encouraging its unnecessarily cruel practices. So, if you think it's wrong to support and encourage unnecessary cruelty, as beliefs B and E suggest, then you're already committed to the wrongness of factory farming and the wrongness of supporting such farming financially, paying someone to be cruel to animals in that way. Step three, you could easily take steps to help reduce the amount of unnecessary suffering in the world by refraining from eating meat and simply eating something else instead. B commits you to the view that you ought to refrain from eating meat. This was the view that it's wrong to support unnecessary suffering. And C and D, these are the beliefs about the kind of person you are, that you really are a person of, of moral authenticity and integrity. If you really are that kind of person, you'll quit eating meat and opt for plant-based foods instead. So implications. doesn't matter what Singer or Reagan or I think. What matters is what you think. Are you living your life in a manner consistent with your own values? Those who accept A through F, but who also eat meat, seem to have three choices. One, stop eating meat so as to live one's life in a manner consistent with one's own values. Two, give up one's values so that eating meat won't conflict with their values. Yeah, we need a little more suffering. What was I thinking? Or three, live an inconsistent and hypocritical existence, retain one's values but fail to abide by them. Okay, I'm going to skip this part and just go to wrap up, because I think there's an interesting connection here between some of the work of 
the ancient Greek philosophers and some work of some continental philosophers. Continental philosophers usually don't get discussed in analytic circles. Big taboo. So I guess I'm committing a lot of taboos here. No theory. Mention continental philosophers in an analytic talk. Okay. We find in the work of Plato and Socrates, as well as the work of many contemporary continental philosophers, that one of the central elements, if not the central element to a philosophical life, a meaningful life worth living, is integrity. Living one's life in a manner consistent with one's most deeply held beliefs and values. Now, conclusion. All of the pain, suffering, and premature death inflicted upon farm animals in modern societies is unnecessary and gratuitous. We don't need to grow food this way. It serves no significant human interest since all human nutritional needs can be met and can be met better with foods of plant, plant origin. Consequently, inflicting such unnecessary pain and suffering and premature death upon farm animals fails to give them the consideration that they're due according to A through F. Implications. A through F together entail that it's wrong to engage in animal agriculture, that it's wrong to support such agriculture with one's purchases by buying and eating meat, and three, that consequently vegetarianism is morally obligatory. The implications of our commitment to A through F are clear. The only question that remains, and this I think, I can't answer this question. This is a question that each one of us who's striving to live a meaningful philosophical life has to ask ourselves, but we have to ask ourselves sincerely. And the question is this. Will I live my life in a manner consistent with my own ethical beliefs and commitments? Will I give animals the consideration that they deserve and refrain from eating them? Or will I struggle to rationalize away those very beliefs and commitments? If Plato and Socrates are right, those wishing to live the good life will do the former. Thank you. <laughs>